What the heck just happened? Segment tonight, as you just heard, there's no let up in playing the race card by the far left. Question are Americans growing numb to it? Or will it get worse in 2017? And here they are, New Year's guys. Bernard McGurk and Greg Gutfeld. I'm so tired of this, Gutfeld. I really am. I, I mean, I, I take it personally. I'm not a Trump supporter per se. Never endorsed him or anything like that. I think I gave him a fair shot mm -hmm. on a program. But the interviews were tough, as many people pointed out. However, I know a lot of people who supported Donald Trump. McGurk's one of them. Okay. Absolutely. And, and I'm supposed to sit here and allow them to be called racist? Yes, because they are. No, you know what, you know what it is? <laughs> liking Donald Trump, Trump is the not liking Obama of 2016. So remember, if you didn't like Obama, you were racist. Now, if you like Trump, you are racist. Imagine so a, you're double racist. You're double ra ra you're racist cubed. Ima you know, there's a left-wing superhero. It's called Race Man. And the only power it has is to throw uh, accusations of bigotry at you. Right. The great thing about 2016 is... 2016 is the kryptonite. It took away the power from race man, and that's why they're imploding everywhere, because the more the boy cried wolf. Do you really think they're imploding, though? Every time you employ mockery against somebody calling you a racist, they fail and you create new, three new tr Trump supporters. What do you say? Well, he's, he's absolutely right about that. It's overused. The uh, accusation of uh, leveling that accusation is so overused. Look, they had Ellen DeGeneres was a racist in 2016. I mean, yeah, nobody... for the uh, Hussein Bolt thing where That's she did right. a cute cartoon. It's right. the last refuge, really, of a skunk with no argument, essentially. <laughs> and, yeah, they want to level it against Donald Trump because he won. They're frustrated. They want to keep it up. Uh, so it, it, I don't think it's going to stick. I mean, uh, it, you know, it, it, again, but they're not going to stop. Then they're not going to stop, but he's got, he can chip away at it slowly. I mean, but look, look, you had uh, Jim Brown over at the Trump Tower talking nice about Donald Trump. I understand Bill and Hillary Clinton are going to go to the inauguration. That's what I hear. So slowly, and if he improves the economy in the inner cities, they can chip away at it, but they'll always use it. They use it against Bush, who was a compassionate conservative. They had George Bush, 43, dragging black people behind in chains behind a pickup truck, if you remember that. So it's, it's a playbook that they always go back to, but one that people are seeing through and are sick and tired right. of. Um, per se, to our uh, interview with uh, Krauthammer, top program, this plays into the difficulty of booking inaugural talent because these entertainers, not the brightest people, many of them in the world, say, gee, you know, the blacks aren't going to like me if I show up, or maybe the Hispanics aren't going to like me. So I got to sit this one out because there's all of that. Swirl. It's not about that. It's about their peers. They're actually being punished by their, the, the people that they compete against. So if a musician says they're going to go on, then a comedian goes on Twitter and says, you're a racist. So it's more about it's, it's, it's more about they're being intimidated by the people in their own profession. Most people I don't. Think give really, a damn. I mean, look, a guy like uh, Andrea Bocelli and the Trump campaign says it didn't you know, invite him, but... Right. Meanwhile, he's d a disabled immigrant, but anyway. Right, on. but it, it looks like there's some truth to the fact that Mr. Bocelli is frightened. Yeah. He's frightened because he's a friend of Trump. Why wouldn't he go sing a couple of songs? No, nobody, wants to be, uh, nobody wants to be accused of that. You're absolutely right about that. It's such an onerous accusation to have slapped against you. But, uh, but again, and the reason why they hate Trump so much is that he's unbowed by it. He's not, he's not cowed by it. He actually he just fights back. He doubles down. And that's why they really hate Donald Trump. It's not working. I, I will see that point. Um, I'm happy to perform there, by the way. I've offered what would you exactly I'm a, do? I'm a, I'm a plate spinner. Oh, is that right? Like, uh, it's amazing. I can right. spin plates with every part of my body. I, I heard every that. Part. I heard, uh, and we really don't want that image ingrained. <laughs> yes. Um, I heard that you're going to bring back Topo Gigio. Yes, yeah, I am. Like I don't that, know that what the little that is. Italian mouse. Yo, yes, he's quite adorable. <laughs> yes. You know, I hide him. This is how Trump can actually curb the hate. He can transition to a woman. I think that would just solve everything. You mean, I mean you mean he could he could become a woman? Donna Trump. He would break glass. Donna feelings. Trump. Donna Trump. He looked damn good in a dress. I mean, you know. Use the, the stairmaster a little I don't bit. think that's going to happen. But I mean, it, it's possible. It's, it's, no, a, it's one, another way to chip away it's not at possible. The stupid, frivolous charges of racism all the time. All right, let's end on that note. It's not possible. <laughs> when we come right back, new survey says there are more conservatives in America than liberals, but the trends are changing. The water's going wild on New Year's Eve. Up ahead.